We worship you, Father, this morning for our help. We worship you that our help comes from you. We are thankful, Father, that you're preserving our souls even forevermore. We're thankful that the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Hallelujah. 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 If that's your testimony, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that's your testimony, type hallelujah. If that's your testimony, type hallelujah. Because he's worthy. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He is resetting our worship this morning. Can I see your worship? Can you just say it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's resetting our focus on him this morning. Because all of our help comes from him. It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from ourselves. But it comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. And he wants us to acknowledge him in all of our our ways so that he can direct our path. Hallelujah. Can you praise him this morning? If you're not too ashamed, can you praise him? If you're not too ashamed to let other people on your timeline know that all of your help comes from the Lord, can you type all of my help, all of my help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Glory to the great I am. Hallelujah. If he's been with you all week, shout hallelujah. If he's kept you so far, shout hallelujah. If you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, shout hallelujah. If he's a way maker, shout hallelujah. If he brought you through, shout hallelujah. If you didn't lose your mind, shout hallelujah if you got food on your table shout hallelujah if you got clothes on your back shout hallelujah if you got your health and your strength shout hallelujah 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 if you can still inhale and exhale on your own shout hallelujah 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 if you are glad that you are here shout hallelujah if you know it's nobody but the Lord, shout hallelujah. If you know it's his grace and his mercy that has kept you, shout hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Glory to the King of Kings. Glory to the Lord of Lords. Glory to the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah. If I had 10,000 tongues, uh, it would not be enough. I could not praise you enough, God, for as good as you have been, as great as you have been, as powerful as you are in our lives, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Never go into to warfare or a fight without a praise. Hallelujah. Never start out your day without a praise or a worship. Never go into a meeting without a praise or a worship. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's something about praising God. Hallelujah. That it summons every angel in heaven. Hallelujah. To stand up on on your behalf, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah. And the angels cry holy, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Good morning, hallelujah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Sunday morning manna. We thank God that we are moving and we are in the Advent season where we are celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The atmosphere is set now for miracles. The atmosphere is set now for breaking. The atmosphere is set now for healing. The atmosphere is set now, oh, for restoration. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for we thank you for tuning in. And again, if you can hit the like and the share button. Uh, we say that this share button has its it has its advantages for those who are on uh, our social media platforms because it's an advantage that we have in, to evangelize our friends and evangelize our loved ones. Uh, you don't know who is watching. You don't know if somebody is on their last leg and they happen to turn to your page. And if they happen to turn to your page, they should see uh, that you serve a God that is living and alive. So if you hit that share button, just trust me, if you hit that share button, you don't know whose life uh, God is using you to save hallelujah hallelujah as we go into the word of the lord this morning let's just offer a brief prayer father in the name of jesus i thank you for this opportunity to stand here and i pray that you use my mouth and use my mind and speak to your people this morning god i pray right now for those who are suffering loss those who are suffering uh bodily harm lord god because of the coronavirus those who are suffering injury in any other way i pray for those who are suffering mentally emotionally god you are the god of all comfort god i thank you that you are in charge of absolutely everything there is none like you none beside you so I pray right now Lord God that you bring healing you bring deliverance God you bring breakthrough to those who are seeking an answer God to those who bodies need to be healed I pray Lord God that you would you would heal them from all manner of sickness and disease God I pray that your healing would go forth over this whole entire earth God and that you would be the healer that you are hallelujah you are Jehovah Rapha the Lord thy God that healeth thee of all manner of sickness and disease. So we command the airways to pick up that healing anointing and spread it wherever it needs to be spread. We speak to healing in Africa. We speak to healing in Asia. We speak healing in China. We speak healing to Costa Rica. We speak healing in Europe. We speak healing in the United States of America. We speak healing all over Asia Minor. We speak healing God. God. We speak healing, God. We speak healing. We speak healing. You sent your word and your word healed them. So there is a sending in this word today, God. And so we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, as we enter the Advent season, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 through 15. If you will, turn there. Uh, we hope that you have your Bibles or, or uh, your electronic devices where you can turn to Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 through 15, and I'll be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. And the word of the Lord reads, Then Herod secretly sent for the Magi and learned from them the exact time the star had first appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child, and when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went their way, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went on before them, continually leading the way until it came and stood over the place where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And after entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then after opening their treasure chest, they presented to him gifts fit for a king, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
and having been warned by God in a dream not to go back to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Now when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod intends to search for the child in order to destroy him. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night and left for Egypt. He remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet Hosea. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Hallelujah. And I like to use uh, following Christ in the crisis. Following Christ in the crisis. Can you just type that for me on your 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 uh, your line, your timeline? Follow following Christ in the crisis. We are in the season of Advent, and Advent is something that means it's finally here. It's finally here. It is usually the period beginning from four Sundays before Christmas. During this time, we see people shopping for presents, visiting with friends. They normally travel to see loved ones. Uh, they cook big spreads, and they spend money like they never have had it before. They celebrate the season and not necessarily the Christ. And so while we are in the season that we're in, I see that we are being reset. This is a season of reset. We can't travel like we want to travel. And many of us can't buy like we would like to buy. And there's no, no use in fixing big spreads because even if we could Big, big spreads. We can't uh, reasonably invite all the people over that we want to come and visit with us. Therefore, we are in a season of reset. Hallelujah. Can you, can you just type reset? Not only is God resetting our country, but he's resetting our focus because our focus has not necessarily been on Christ. Our focus has been on the pandemic. The focus has been on the election. The focus has been on unemployment. The focus has been on will I make it, will I not make it. And now we're coming down to a season where God is saying, shift your focus back on me. We are in the season of Advent where Christ is actually paramount to our reset. We must understand that we have, we're have we going to have to shift into a place where we just don't celebrate the season, but we celebrate the Christ. And even though we're in the midst of crisis, what better way to celebrate Christ than to know that he is the reason for the season. Amen? Amen. They are, these are times when we can help. As a matter of fact, um, our church... Uh, has and we don't broadcast a lot of what we do because we know that our God who sees in secret will reward us openly but our children's ministry are providing cards and we and we have uh, uh working together with other a few other churches to get cards to the nursing homes for senior citizens we know that that's important at a time when people cannot gather just to let people know that they are loved and thought of by a God who is amazing we have our angel tree, which we provide uh, uh, clothes and, 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 and gifts and presents for children that otherwise would not be able to have them. And so what this is what I'm saying is that you can do things like this to show people about the love of Jesus Christ in the middle of a crisis. They have to know that he still cares in the middle of a crisis. So when I looked at this scripture, 
I began to say that we are in, um, we are, are still in a vision for 2021 because the vision has to be cast before you get there. You can't start getting a vision once you get to the place or get to the season or get to the time. God normally gives you a precursor or forecast of where you're going. And when you are in tune with God, the spirit of God, you get a glimpse of the direction that you are headed into. So while we're in the Advent season, I saw that there was a, uh, I, I picked up through the birth of Jesus Christ and what happened with him after his birth, uh, that these are things that are happening now, especially here in uh, our times that we are living in. So as I begin, I'm going to read a little bit more about our Vision 2020, 2021, and then we're going to go to scripture. I want to read the first, parag first paragraph again. It says, as the global community comes out of a year of crisis, chaos, and challenges, we see 2021 as a year of creativity, courage, and confidence. And again, this came from, um, I am a member of Global United Fellowship, where our bishop is Bishop Neil Ellis. And again, he says, with the threat of insecurity and unpredictability still looming in this hour, the frequency from heaven has been reset, and, and the ears of the faithful, the faithful are being sensitized to that sound for spiritual insight and divine revelation. And then he says, uh, we want to go down uh, uh, to a third paragraph and this is where I want to go today. It says, as God shifts the foundation of the world system and resets the agenda for the body of Christ in 2021, the people of God must be vigilant or watchful. Can you type watchful? The church of the living God will rise to her feet with a roar from heaven. And with a spirit of boldness, I want you to receive the spirit of boldness like never before. And here we are. The spirit of intimidation hurled toward the people of God is breaking and the spirit of timidity is taking its lead. God will not take a back seat to man. Heaven rules earth. And so as I began to talk, look at the scripture, I see that it goes along with vision 2021, 20, finding Christ in the crisis. And see here we have, there were the crisis that we can see. We have a few crises, but we can see just a couple of them. Mary, who is a virgin, is, and she's a spouse to Joseph. Uh, she finds herself pregnant by the Holy Spirit. That's a crisis uh, because now she's got to trust this same Holy Spirit and tell her fiancé, Joseph, uh, that she is pregnant and that it is by the Holy Spirit. That's the crisis that she faces. And then Joseph faces this crisis. And the crisis that he's facing is, I've now got to either cover and marry uh, 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 this woman, this, this, this virgin called Mary, or either I put her away and give her a divorce quietly. Crisis. There is a crisis. And, and, and then when, as we come and, and Jesus is born, we see the crisis now is subsiding, but there is another crisis. Jesus is born of the Virgin Mary. Remember, there was no place for him in the inn. Um, Jesus, is, his cousin, is, is being born before him. Uh, they're in a, a place where where John the Baptist, who is his first cousin, is six months older than him, and, and, and his mother, John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth, faced her own crisis that she was not able to have children. She thought then she becomes pregnant at an old age, and we see the same Holy Spirit uh, that overshadowed Mary and made her pregnant. When Mary comes and meets Elizabeth, uh, the baby in Elizabeth's belly jumps uh, because it's the Spirit of God that quickeneth the baby. John the Baptist 
which is in Elizabeth's belly. Now we see the spirit of God at action. He is alive and in action. So when they move over and, and Mary is uh, giving birth already to Jesus, Verse chapter 2 of Matthew verse 1 says, now when Jesus was born, apparently he's already here in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Herod the great magi, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? And so when I look uh, and, I, I, and I look and I begin to, to study what's going on here, now they move from one crisis to another. They move to a place where now they're, they're settled in and they're settled with the fact and Joseph is settled with the fact that this baby is of the Holy Spirit and, and he is charged to be the father of a child that is not his own but he is charged by God. We see that now they move to another crisis and, and they run into a, a king, a, a, a person by the name of Herod the Great. Hmm. And you say, why is that? Uh, uh, why is that so important? Herod the Great, at, at that point, he was the king, and he heard that there had been a baby born by the name of Jesus. You ask me, so what is the crisis of that? Uh, well, when I looked up Herod the Great, uh, he was a descendant of Antipater, an Edomite who converted to Judaism in the second century. But that's not the crisis. The crisis is that he was an exceptionally rural king, a, a cruel king. It's nothing like being under cruel leadership when you have just given birth to your vision. And what made him exceptionally cruel is that he ordered the murder of one of his wives. He ordered the murder of his mother-in-law. He ordered the murder of his brother-in-law. He ordered the murder of his uncle and at least three of his own sons. And they are under now the power of a great intimidator. <laughs> Whatever he says do, they are intimidated in the back of their mind because they know if they don't do it uh, that they could be the next on the chopping block. Uh, it's nothing worse than an intimidating leader. A leader who is leading a country or a nation under intimidation. Hallelujah. Here we are uh, in uh, Vision 2021 uh, talking about the intimidator and most of the times people that are intimidators, uh, they are intimidated themselves by something. <laughs> Can I just stop that right there? Have you ever run into somebody that was intimidating to you, but you didn't know why? And the reason is that their reputation has preceded them, but behind that, there is something that they are scared or afraid of themselves. And we find that King Herod has found out uh, that his replacement is born. <laughs> He is intimidated because his replacement is born. What, what do you mean? Even though this is a baby, he's still intimidated by a baby. So it doesn't take something big to intimidate you. It's the thought that he was going to be replaced by somebody that could do better than him. Anybody intimidated, been, ever been intimidated? If you're not ashamed to put it down, say, yeah, that's me. I've been intimidated. And it wasn't the big things that intimidated me. It was the small things. As a matter of fact, I believe that, 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 that the word of God says that when we finally say, see Satan, we're going to say, is this the man that intimidated us? Some of us are intimidated by things that we should be able to overcome and conquer. How can a baby that's so little be intimidated to a king who has killed so many and ruled so many? So what he does is he finds out through the astrologers 
the astrologers who read the, 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 the they, they read the stars or they called the zodiac readers he finds out from them that the star there is a star and that star is hanging over Jesus the one who was just born and so when he eavesdrops on the situation he begins to manipulate and most intimidators are manipulators. Can I say that again? Most intimidators are manipulators. Maybe I'm in the wrong place, but I know that this is the Christmas season. But here we see the birth of Jesus Christ, and he is, he is being come after by Herod. As a matter of fact, the astrologer saw the star, and the Bible says that in verse 7, then Herod secretly sent for the Magi and learned from them the exact time that the star had first appeared. He understood that this is something that's already happened. Remember, at the exact time you pray, God hears you. And so he borrowed from that rule and knew that when the star was there, Jesus was already born. Hallelujah. Somebody better look for the star because when the star is in the sky, that means your answer is already here. There's a sign called the star and that star was a light from heaven and that light shone on the earth letting the earth know that peace was getting ready to come to the earth so the bible says then he sent them to bethlehem saying go and search carefully for the child and when you have found him report to me so that I too may come and worship him <laughs> hallelujah here is Herod saying to the magi he's saying to them I need you to go find him because I want to worship him too uh, we know that that's not true we know that a manipulator will use even God uh, to get their perfect pr their, they get plans put into place the Babylonian astro astrologers were the first wise men to come to Jerusalem because of a star they move because of a star hallelujah and a special manifestation from God to indicate that the king of kings was born can we reset now the king of kings is born in a situation where we are being intimidated we must realize that the king of kings is born hallelujah so now we have a new king. Uh, Herod instantly knows that he must be the new Messiah. He becomes jealous and power hungry and asks that the, the, the Magi go and check him out. Hallelujah. He had outright opposition to Jesus. If you are following Jesus, you know that there was outright opposition to him. Jesus didn't just walk on the scene. Number one, he had to come through the crisis of being born in a manger. He had to come through the crisis of being born to a virgin. He had to come through the crisis of a daddy who had to come to grips with the fact that he had been chosen to cover him and keep him. Hallelujah. And instead of a rival, sometimes we don't look, need to look at people as rivals, but look at them as brothers and sisters. Everybody's not your enemy. You don't need to be intimidated because somebody else got a bigger gift than you in your mind. You don't have to be intimidated by anybody's preaching, anybody's teaching. You don't have to be intimidated. Just know we're all on the same side. Can I say this morning, we're all on the same side. Matter of fact, Mary's baby jumped and Jesus jumped in the womb, indicating that Elizabeth was not intimidated by Mary's pregnancy. And Mary was not intimidated by Elizabeth's pregnancy. We going to praise together. Jesus was praising along with John the Baptist in the womb. No competition, no intimidation. They were all in this thing together. Can I say I love you because we're all in this thing together. You may be able to sing better than me, but we're going to sing in the crowd. You may be able to preach better than me, but I'll back you up anytime. You may be able to serve like I can't serve, but I'm going to help you serve. We're all in this thing together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and what we see here is that 
Verse 9, after hearing the king, they went their way, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went on before them, continually leading them until it came and stood over the place where the young child was. So now Jesus moves from being an infant to a young child. The, 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 the magi follow the star until they get to the place where Jesus is. As a matter of fact, we need to follow God until Hell, we get to the place where God wants us to shift. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but that's, not, that's not where I'm going. I, I, I'm going to, to, to let you know that the enemy is happy to remind of, us of an excuse to cut ourselves off from each other through intimidation, through racial, cultural religious divisions uh, many of us have cut off we don't worship with this one and we don't worship with that one and how does that work in heaven T tell me is it a sign is it a section for the baptists is it a section for the methodists is it a section for the catholics uh, how, how does that work is it a section for the evangelicals uh, we all got to learn is there a section for the democrats and is there in a section for the republicans uh, i just want to know because uh, i want to make sure i I'm in the right section. When I get there, I want to make sure that my voter registration card has put me in the right section. No, I believe we're all in this thing together. And if we don't get along down here and solve the problems of the world down here, how can we show the world that Christ is Christ in the crisis? Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as, as we move on, um, Bible says that when the Magi saw the child, I love this part, they were moved with exceeding joy and rejoiced exceedingly. They rejoiced exceedingly. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were getting ready to break the spirit of intimidation. You want to break that spirit of intimidation? I'm going to give you three things. But right now, you got to see the simple thing that they did was they rejoiced when they recognized and found Jesus. You, you, you want to come out? You got to recognize that even in the crisis, you got to find Jesus. Even in all of this, you got to know that Jesus is still Lord. The Magi traveled six miles and they, they went to, to Jeru from Jerusalem to Bethlehem because Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And when they finally found him, they began to worship. But they bow down and they worship. Can someone shout worship? The Bible says, when I looked up the, the Greek words there, it, 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 it says everything that's translated said they, they were in high spirits or high in the spirit and they became loud in a mighty way. I don't think we worship God enough. This Bible says that they were high in the spirit. You ever been high in the spirit? That means you go to a place where your mind just loves God. You go to a place where you think and you know that there's nobody that can compare to God. Hallelujah. The Greek word that they used there, preago, which is translated, they went before, the star went before them. So you got to be led by God in order to worship him. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that they rejoiced the Greek word chiro, which means to be cheerful or well off. They were cheerful and well off. I'm giving you Greek here. The Greek word uh, sphoda is translated in the King James Version as exceeding. So to put it all together, they were exceedingly glad and well off and they worshiped him with a loud voice when they saw the star. Can I read verse 10 again? They didn't even do that when they saw Jesus. They did that when they saw the star. God, somebody need to worship the Lord because you see a glimpse. Uh, they didn't even see him yet. They just knew that he was going to, not going to be far off. I'm worshiping him because I see a glimpse of hope. I'm worshiping him. I'm seeing a glimpse of him in a crisis. I'm worshiping him because he is king of kings. And if I can see a glimpse of him, I know that my redeemer is not far off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
But then it says, and after entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Wait a minute. They would not have done this if King Herod had been there. Because <laughs> there's something about an intimidator that makes you not operate on to your full ability. The, the Bible said they fell down. I thought it was uh, 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 quite, quite telling that they fell down and worshipped. And, and you know Herod is not going to fall down and worship anybody. He is the king of intimidators. So they, here he is. They are freed because of their worship. So the star is seen as a messenger that something else is coming down the road. And then the Bible says in verse 11, I'm, I'm moving on quickly. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> when they, not only did they worship him, but they gave him. They gave him gold, they gave him frankincense and myrrh. Gold is a symbolic of kingship. When you have a king, you bring him gold. Frankincense, hallelujah, is, is, is indicative of deity. That means he's just not a regular another Herod, but he is actually the king of kings. And then myrrh is the ointment or the aroma, though that's what they normally um, uh, they put that on the body when they, they get ready to bury the body. So it means that they were prophetically presenting his whole life to him, uh, even as a child. Hallelujah. They knew that he would be a king. Uh, they knew that he, would had, he was uh, 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 a deity in the flesh. Uh, they knew also that frankincense represents something that you give to a priest. Uh, they knew that he was a priest, uh, that he was a king, uh, and they knew that he had to be anointed uh, for the death that he would suffer. Hallelujah. I'm talking about my Jesus this morning. I know you want to flip because you're not talking, we're not talking about down your alley. I'm not tearing up the body of Christ. And, and this is just a sidebar. I don't believe God is happy with us attacking each other in the body of Christ. So what? So what? You're different than me. So what? You're a prophet and I'm a preacher. So what? You're a pastor and I'm a preacher. God is not, he is not happy with that. We need to build each other up. The world tears down the church. Enough. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as I begin to move on, uh, the Bible says in verse 12, and this is where, this is really what got me, and this is where I believe that God has taken us. Verse 12 says, and having been warned by God in a dream not to go back to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Hallelujah. I see that now the Magi are being broke, broken from the spirit of intimidation. Remember, word for 2021 you, 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 what did he say in 2021? The spirit of intimidation hurled toward the people of God is breaking and the spirit of timidity is taking its leave. Can you shout intimidation is breaking? Say it again. Intimidation is breaking. No more being afraid to do what God has called you to do. But when I broke this down, I looked at it. It was so powerful. And it says, and having been warned, this seems like God is doing a divine intervention. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm trying to stand still, but I feel like running. God is doing a divine intervention, but that didn't happen until they worshiped. <laughs> Good God Almighty, once they bowed down and worshipped, and they didn't care who was looking, God did a divine intervention. Can I give somebody a word this morning? When you worship, there is going to become divine intervention on your part. He began 
to warn them in a dream. He began to warn the Magi, don't you mess with this one. I hear, I hear you, God. I, I'm getting ready to intervene in your situation. I'm getting ready to intervene in your life. I, I'm getting ready to intervene in your crisis. I, I know you are in a, a crisis situation, but in 2021, I'm sending divine intervention for my worshipers. Where are my worshipers? Those who don't care who's looking at you. Your worshiper getting ready for divine intervention because of your worship. Hallelujah. 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 He says, he began to speak on the behalf of Jesus. <laughs> we talked last week about angelic intervention. The Holy Spirit intervening in the chaos on the earth. Now God says, I'm going to intervene because you're worshiping me in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. You thought your worship was in vain. God said, no, your worship is not in vain. Once you truly, truly come back into the divine reset and worship me, I'm going to intervene. But, that, but that, 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 that's, not, that's not exactly it. Because he says that intervention is a disruption of plans. So he said this intervention is a disruption of the plans that the enemy had for you. Can I, can I say that the spirit of the Lord is in this place right now? God says, I'm, I'm sending an interruption. Uh, I'm interrupting your schedule. That warfare that you've been going through, I'm sending divine interruption to it. Uh, that, 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 that health situation that you've been going through, I'm sending divine interruption to it. Uh, I'm interrupting the plans of the enemy. He wanted to take you out, but I'm interrupting his plans. Uh, he wanted you to lose your mind, uh, but I'm interrupting his plans plans. He wanted you to be poor and set out on the street, but I'm interrupting his plans. He wanted you to be poor, broke, busted, and disgusted, but I'm inter... Someone shout divine interruption. Woo-wee. Woo. Mm. This verse deals with the intervention of the Lord into the wise men's lives to save them from serving as instruments of Herod's work. Good God Almighty. Woo! Yeah, those things that you were a part of that you thought were God, he's intervening so that you won't get hurt. There are many things, people that have good intentions, but you've really been used by the enemy. And he says, I'm divinely intervening here because if the Magi done what Herod wanted him to do, to do they would have been part of a scheme to get rid of Jesus. They were just being obedient. And I know some of you think you're just being obedient, but God says some of you are being obedient in places that I never called you to be obedient in. You are really bound by intimidation. And he says there's a divine interruption coming so that the end will be the better end than the end that the enemy plans for you. Someone shout hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. We are told that the Lord spoke to them. There was a divine intimation. So the first one word you want to use is, is a divine intervention. God will do a divine intervention when you worship him. But here it is, a divine intimation. That's different than an intervention. And divine intimation is a hint or indirect suggestion. <laughs> uh, can I go sit down now? <laughs> Y'all waiting for God to give you a paragraph and a thesis. He says, I'm going to give you a hint or indirect suggestion. He didn't teach, he gave the Magi a hint. A warning is a hint. When God gives a warning, it's a hint. It's an indirect suggestion. Oh, if you've ever been driving down the street and you get a, a, a hint in your spirit that maybe I should make a left here and don't go straight, that's a divine intimation. God leads by intimations a lot of times. A lot of times we're waiting for God to draw out a thesis plan.
man. Uh, give us a whole book of when, where, how, from the beginning to the end, uh, and we're not going to move till we got every, every T crossed and every I dotted, every period in place. Uh, and God says, these magi just needed a hint. Uh, can someone say, God, just give me a hint? Uh, I don't know what this means, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but some of you trying to figure out your next move, and, and God says, I've given you a hint. I've given you an intimation. I've given you a hint of what I need you to do. I've given you a hint of where I need you to go. He said, this is an indirect suggestion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you worship, you get divine intervention, divine intimation, and a divine injunction. Verse 12 says, and having been warned by God in a dream not to go back to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Woo! God is sending a divine injunction. Can someone shout injunction? injunction. Uh, I'm some of you are looking at me like, what does that mean? An injunction is a court order requiring a person to do or to cease or cease from doing a specific action. I need to speak to about three people. An injunction is a court order requiring a person to cease doing a specific action. <laughs> Ooh. A court order means that there's the court in heaven already meeting on your behalf. When you worship, you cause the courts of heaven to convene. Let me just say that one more time. That's why the enemy fights you on worship. And that's why he wanted God to worship for himself. Because he knew that worship is tied to the courts of heaven. And he knew that in the courts of heaven, there is the righteous judge. And he knows that there is your adversary who is the enemy. But he also knows that you have an attorney that's pleading your case. And he says when you worship, there is an injunction, a court order saying Cease and desist from bothering my child. Hallelujah. Come on now. Someone shout, cease and desist. <laughs> Woo. That's an injunction. And what happens here is that the Magi was given an injunction to go the other way and leave Jesus alone. <laughs> They were given an injunction that you can't go back and report on Herod. Cease and desist all of your ties with the intimidator. Oh, who am I talking to? Somebody, the, the courts of heaven, when you worship and you praise the Lord, even in this season, you are moving through the courts of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Magi left. Because they had a cease uh, and, a, and desist. Uh, they had an injunction saying that you better go the other way. Isn't it good that the enemy can even hear from God? There are some certain things that he won't do to you because they know that if they ever get thrown in jail, that's the lake of fire. So they will leave you alone because they know what they're in is. And they don't want to, to come right now. So that's why when you intercede, all my intercessors, uh, when you pray, you are issuing injunctions. You are issuing injunctions on behalf of God's people. Don't you get tired of interceding, but you get to the face of God because he's issuing injunctions. Hallelujah. And at that point, intimidation is broken. Woo. Intimidation is broken. I'm almost there. Verse 13 says, and now when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod intends to search for the child in order to destroy him. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that Joseph was able to hear from the father? Yeah. We're my brothers. <laughs> We're my brothers. We're my brothers. I'm pushing you to the face of God, even in this crisis. In this crisis, God wants to speak to you. And in this crisis, he wants to show you who is God. And he wants to give you divine direction. He wants to intervene in your life. He wants to intervene in what you are doing because your family is, they are requiring that you get in place. But you're hard on the brothers, apostle, 
No, Mary, Mary going Mary to follow you. Because <laughs> Mary's like to follow Joseph's who hid from the Lord. <laughs> Can I get an amen from my sisters? You got no problem hearing from the Lord when you are in order. And when Mary knows that you, Joseph is hearing from God, the Bible says that he gets up and he leaves. So now Jesus is born in Bethlehem. He moves to Jerusalem. And now he's, Joseph is getting a, 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 a edict from God to move to Egypt. Woo. Jesus is now and Egypt is 200 miles away Mary could have easily questioned that but because she knew Joseph was hearing from God she followed him 200 miles and some people just think 200 miles you're talking about on foot you're talking about on foot so God began to show me that even in Jesus' young life he moved around because guess what this earth is not his home he couldn't get stationed in one place because he had to be constantly on the move. If you see, after he, when he became a grown man and he was all God and all man, he was constantly moving, constantly moving, knowing that his work is in, mo in movement. And sometimes God has a still for a season. But sometimes God will move us. And I'm not talking about physical movement, but I'm talking about our spirit. I need you to be here for this, here for this, here for this. I need you to pray for this. I need you to pray for that. I need you to pray for this. We need to be able to move spiritually with God. But he left and he had to be positioned in Egypt. Why did he have to be positioned in Egypt? If you move with Christ in the crisis, he's positioning you for what has been spoken over your life before you got to this point. <laughs> the reason why he had to move to Egypt is because the prophetic word, uh, the prophetic word says he remained there until this death of Herod, but he, there was a fulfillment of what the Lord has spoken by the prophet Hosea out of Egypt, I have called my son. He didn't say out of Bethlehem, I've called my son. He didn't say out of Jerusalem, I've called my son. But he said out of Egypt, I have called my son. And this had to, oh my God, this is a, a, a something that was seven, seven uh, seasons before. Ah, it was spoken before, seven seasons before Jesus even came here. So when we look at the context of the prophetic, we got to understand that context must be driven or drive our interpretation of text. Ah. Because in this particular scripture, in these times, they, they interpreted scripture literally. But the context of the scripture has to drive our interpretation of the text to have a prophetic meaning. So if God is going to speak to you through text, we got to look at it in the context. And when we look at it in the context of what was happening, Israel was in Egyptian bondage in Hosea 11.1. 1. As a matter of fact, let me read it. Hosea 11 1 says, when Israel was a child, a young nation, I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Israel was a young nation and they were in Egyptian bondage. And so we see that the context here is that it's talking about Israel. But when we look at Jesus, he's a type of Israel in Egyptian bondage. And the Bible says so. Out of Egypt, I have called my son in Hosea. But by the time we get over to Matthew and Jesus is born and going to Egypt, he's got to get to Egypt so God can call him out of Egypt. And so everything that is happening here has been prophesied way before he got here. So that's why you cannot understand your life because it seems like it's out of context. But actually your life is in context because he's putting you where he needs you to be so he can call you out of that place in order to manifest his presence in your life. Ah, 
that was good to me. He called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Where you are now is just a, a stopover to where you're going because when God gets you to where you're going, there'll be a manifestation of the prophetic utterance over your life. We cannot say God is not doing what he said he was going to do. He says that they're going to break the back of intimidation. So we have to get under intimidation in order for us to be brought out of intimidation. I've never seen intimidation so bad. We got people following false rumors because of intimidation. We got people that were repeating crazy schemes because of intimidation. We got people that won't stand up and do what's right for the U.S. because of intimidation. But God says, I'm bringing that, that and spirit of the intimidation that was hurled at the U.S. I'm bringing you out. I'm bringing you out. It's the same intimidation that Herod hurled. God is bringing us out of intimidation. Calling green, red, and purple, yellow. Because you're intimidated. What in the world? So when he says... You better get that. When he says the spirit of intimidation hurled toward the people of God is breaking. We got prophets intim intimidated. And they're prophesying under intimidation. We got governmental leaders prophesying and, and ruling under intimidation. He said the spirit of timidity is taking its lead. That means, uh, he says, I will not take a back seat to man anymore. What do you mean? Reset. Uh, he says, right now, the, the spirit of God is letting you be subject to the spirit of intimidation until my people learn how to worship me. Uh, when they learn how to worship me, the spirit of intimidation will be broken. Uh, that thing that's holding you hostage, that's making you say, recount, recount, recount. God has said, I'm breaking it. He said, I'm not going to take a back seat to man. Heaven rules earth. Can you declare that with me in your, in your type it? Heaven rules earth. Uh, the Magi knew that heaven ruled earth. Herod didn't rule earth. Ha God rules earth. And the heavens rule earth. We got to learn how to move in the crisis with Christ. The Magi move with Christ in the crisis. 2021, we're learning to move with Christ in the crisis. 2021, we're going to see a breaking of intimidation. And God is going to take his rightful place even in the church. Hallelujah. If you are grateful, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're thankful because God is breaking the back of intimidation, shout hallelujah. I, I dare you to worship him right now and shout hallelujah. I dare you. I, I dare you because he's going to send things that will break you out of being intimidated. Even in the crisis. Jesus wasn't intimidated. He grew up. To be a man of great stature and a, and the son of God. He, he is all God and all man. And the enemy wanted to intimidate him on every turn. Even on the cross. He said no man take my life. I'm not intimidated by man God says. Jesus Christ was not intimidated. He stood strong and faithful. And when he comes inside of you. Those of you who were timid and afraid. He now makes you powerful and bold. Not in your strength, but in his strength. He died for you. He died on a cross. He was not intimidated of that cross. He died on that cross. And he got up on the third day. From a baby all the way to the cross. He cared for you. And as we celebrate him, the best gift you can give is the gift of giving him your life. You're in a crisis, give him your life. Find out who he is. He is that he is. 
And if that's you, raise your hands right where you are. We can't see you, but God can see you. Raise your hand right where you are. Break the spirit of intimidation and say, I'm going to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today. If that's you, bow your head and pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I repent of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sins and that you rose on the third day. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. And now I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, that's all you had to do. If you prayed it, don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. God is breaking that. And he's using you, whoever you are, he's using you to break through and stand for him. Stand for truth and righteousness. Amen. And if you have been blessed by this message we have across the bottom of our screen how you can give your tithe and your offering. Um, our members, we expressly, we, we, we thank you for being givers during this season, and we express how God gives seed to the sower. And so we express right now our gratitude, but God is saying that the tenth belongs to him. And so we at Beyond the Veil are tithers. And those of you who uh, maybe you're not a member of the church, but you want to sow, you got to put some seed in the ground. We're inviting you to sow. Just look at the cross, the bottom of the, of the screen, and take advantage of an opportunity to be blessed even in a crisis. Amen? Amen. Until next week, God willing, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.